Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. If you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe and the notification bell so you never miss any of these Cardano updates. So today I sat down with Rob and Josh from Cornucopius. So Cornucopius is a game that they are building on top of the Cardano blockchain. So we've all seen the explosion of gaming over the last while. So I put out a post to find out what is actually happening on top of Cardano as far as gaming. Lots of projects commented under the post over on Twitter and the guys here reached out privately as at the time they couldn't put the information out publicly. But we have recorded an interview which will play after this. I will put timestamps down below. I'm going to give you a very brief introduction here. Then I'm going to play a demo of showing what the whole island and the game and everything like that looks like and then into the interview with the guys. So the island awaits. It is going to be a play to earn game based around NFTs where you can buy NFTs, use them as characters within the game. There's also going to be different zones within the game as well, as you can see some of them playing in the background here, and you will see even more of that in the demo. So with the NFTs, you can buy them, use them in the game. You can also create items in the game, which can become NFTs that you can then sell on and everything like that as well. You can see on the marketplace, these are the first NFTs that will be available. They are not for sale yet. You can see that they are listed as, I think out of stock when you go into them, but they just haven't been put up for sale yet. I think they may do some sort of a giveaway in line with the video as well. So if you follow their YouTube or their social media, I think Twitter, they will do something in the next week or so. And this is the demo that I'm going to show you now in a second as well. Just over on the about, you'll be able to see that Rob and Josh, these are the two guys who I sit down with. We get into everything, talking about all about the game. Cardano in general, Rob has had successful projects go through Project Catalyst in the past as well. Cornucopias currently have a project in Project Catalyst, so I will put the links for that down below. I am excited to see where this project goes. I think it definitely has a lot of potential. In general, anything in the gaming space, I think is going to bring huge adoption into cryptocurrency over the next while. We see a full generation that's growing up playing games online. And when you bring in a full economy into that and bring in a way for these guys to be able to earn through actually playing games, then it is going to be absolutely massive. So I'll switch over to the demo now and then we will get into the interview with the guys. So thanks for watching. Give the video a like. Let me know your thoughts down below and share it out there as well to show what is actually being built on top of Cardano. No longer just a ghost chain. So let's jump into it. Hi, my name's John. I'm the lead developer for Cornucopius. In this short video, I'm going to go over some of the main features of our NFT collectible blockchain game, The Island. The Island is a free to play multiplayer world where players can hang out with their friends, explore the lands, and play a variety of mini games to build up their collections and earn real world value, with each aspect of the game being playable alone or with friends. What you've been seeing on screen is a collection of the island zones, each with a unique theme and range of mini games built around that theme. Over the course of the development, real world businesses will also be given the opportunity to purchase digital land giving them the opportunity to showcase their business and create incentives for visitors. A Ticketmaster, for example, could use this opportunity to sell tickets to real or virtual world events. The possibilities are endless. The entire island is created around NFT technology, allowing the players to earn, buy, sell or trade any NFT they have acquired in-game or purchased on our online NFT marketplace. The beauty of the island is that every NFT unlocked can be used within the game, meaning a player can play the game with their favorite character and show off all the NFTs they've unlocked to other players in the world. Or if the player would rather sell off their NFTs for in-game or real-world value, they can do so freely. On top of mini-games and exploring the world, we also have plans to expand the game into a similar style of the game Roblox or Minecraft, where players can not only purchase land, but can expand the game on their own terms producing their own buildings and mini games which can also be traded off as NFTs. We aim to keep the player at the heart of our decentralized blockchain ecosystem, allowing the player to vote and contribute to the direction of the game as it evolves through the years. This is just a taste of what we've got in store for the island and we have many more features under development. Thank you so much for listening to my brief overview of our game and I hope this has given you an idea of how much potential the island has. 
and how exciting the future for NFT-based MMO gaming really is. So come join us. The island awaits. What's going on guys, Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. Today I am sitting down with Rob and Josh from Cornucopias, which is a new game that has been developed in, I suppose, in conjunction with the Cardano blockchain. And what we're going to go through is go through the game, go through NFTs in general, have a look at what they're doing, what's different, talk about the gaming space in general on blockchain and what the future may look like there. So Rob, Josh, you're very welcome to the channel. So, hey, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good to be on it. Let's do a quick introduction for anyone that isn't familiar with you guys. Um, Josh, do you want to kick it off? Who you are, kind of how you got involved or where you came yeah, across yeah. Rob? Yeah, well, that's actually a fun story. So um, I have a stake pool on Cardano. It's called Grow Your Stake. And I've also got a YouTube channel called Cardano Chats. Um, I was interviewing Rob on Cardano Chats. The reason I even reached out to Rob was because I was watching a video from Charles Hoskinson where he was running through different catalyst projects that were being funded. And he came across this one called Vis Visual Studio. And Charles said, oh, that's really important. We need that. And I, I took a note of it and looked up Rob at, on LinkedIn, ended up finding him on uh, Catalyst and then found his contact info on LinkedIn and reached out to him and we started chatting. Uh, we haven't published the video to Cardano Chats for multiple reasons, but what did occur from that is Rob got Rob and I got to know each other a little bit, and uh, he introduced this game idea to me. And uh, a couple weeks later, we're we're off to the races, and uh, we started. Um, you know, brought me in as a CMO, and um, that's that's my role within the company, and it's it's a pretty exciting project. So um, can't wait to tell you more about it. Nice. And yeah, I'll put your links down below for your stake pool and the charity that you do a lot of work for as well. Really good cause. So I'll make sure all of them links are below as well thanks. as links to the game. Yeah, thanks, man. So, Rob, do you want to give the introduction to yourself for how you came in contact yeah. with Cardano? Yeah, sure. Um, I've been in the Cardano community um, since fun, fun one. So, so back in August. And, and in fact, it's a year today since uh, the invitations went out for, for the Cardano Catalyst. So it's, it's a bit of a milestone today. Um, yeah, so I've, I've been programming ever since I was about 12 um, and been, been part of Cardano community since 2017. Um, and then I just really got involved with, with the Catalyst project. Um, I was quite successful in, in getting a funded project in Fund3 um, which I've now delivered, um, and I've also had a, a funded project in Fund4. Um, and like Josh said, we, we got in contact because he wanted to interview me for, for the game. Um, but the, the real reason that you haven't seen our video is because he lost it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, man. It's true. True. Okay, very good. So you have done a lot within the Cardano space already. Catalyst, we might get onto that in a while as well to get a bit of a deeper look into that for anyone who's not familiar with it. It's basically a way that any project can put forward a proposal and potentially get funded by the Cardano treasury. So to me, that is a huge resource that Cardano has that lots of other blockchains don't have out there because look, there's lots of people out there have found over time have great ideas, but they just don't have the funding or don't have the means to actually get it developed. So this means that anyone can put forward their idea and potentially fund a team to uh, bring their ideas into reality. So on the game then, what is Cornucopias or what's it all about? Who wants to take the lead? <laughs> uh, sure, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll chime in there. Um... Cornucopius is a game. It's a, it's basically a like a metaverse type game where uh, you have NFT assets that you can trade, uh, you can own. So you'll be able to own your own character. You'll be able to own your own land. Um, and I know that we we need to get pretty deep into NFTs at some point here. But uh, basically, we're going to have multiple mini uh, games throughout the game, and it's going to be a land that you can explore that has multiple zones as well. So there will be a uh, of the Wild West, there will be the Age of the Samurai, 
Uh, so there's all sorts of fun zones that we're going to create. It also bridges in real world businesses. So there's going to be an urban adventure, a city where you can go. And uh, for, for example, you can see different NFT marketplaces that other projects that are being built on Cardano or even other chains at some point will be coming in and uh, displaying their business and creating incentives for you to go visit that within the game. So we're, we're really creating a virtual world that is a game that has many games inside of it. It's, it's pretty interesting. Rob, I don't know if there's anything you'd add to that because there, there's a lot that we can cover. Um, yeah, we've, we've got a bit of a graphic that we can show you, if you can bring that up, Paul. That's the island, yeah. Yeah, so, so this kind of represents part of, part of the island um, separated into the various zones. So if we look in the heart where it says the city, this is kind of a, like a New York-style city where people will be able to wander around. They'll be able to um, own some of the apartments. Um, we have a really cool mechanism where you'll be able to, to not only build um, furniture for the different apartments, but you'll be able to to sell them on the marketplace as well. So, I've, so one of the key aspects of the game really is to get in the community involved as much as possible, and and to give the game lots of longevity. Um, so, community members will be able to um, build that, like say, furnishings and tables, and indeed, you'll be able to build entire cities, and then other they'll be able to then sell that uh, as kind of like a blueprint. Um, and then other community members will be able to pick up that blueprint, explore the world, go and pick up all the materials and then craft that that table. And then they can either use that table or that bed within their own apartment or they can then go and sell it on themselves. So, so there's a, as well as play to earn within the game, um, there's a big emphasis on, on build to earn as well. So, so that's kind of like the, the city in the center. Like Josh said, on the outside of the city, we have these these white zones, which are going to be the theme zones. Um, and so we've got some really cool NFT characters that will be that you that will have extra abilities when they're in their home zone. So a cowboy, for instance, when he when he's in the, the Wild West zone, he, he'll get some additional benefits. And when he wanders into or like the, the samurai area, that, then he won't he won't be as powerful. Um, and then on the outside of that, in the yellow area, we have this land where, where, where it's traditional land where people will be able to purchase that land um, and then build either the games on it or or, or uh, they'll be able to rent it out to other people. There's lots of things that, that we're going to do with this land. Um, and also, as you can see, there's a community land there. So, so this is going to be reserved where, where we, we, within our in-game governance we'll be able to vote and, and actually give part of the land away for the community to, to build on it because because we because we we've seen how these the prices of some of these land games they just get out of control so so we don't want that we we, we want a, a big part of the game to, to be community driven okay very interesting and i suppose this actually came about was that i put a post out on twitter looking i seen what's happening in the gaming space out there and other blockchains and I wanted to know what's going on on Cardano, and that's when you guys messaged me to have a chat. I had a quick chat with Josh, and I was kind of sold on. I wanted to find out more about it. So there's a lot going on there, I suppose, for anyone who is coming from the world of, I suppose you have like Sims and stuff like that years ago where you can go in and you can build your own world, and you have elements of that kind of modernizing a lot of that type of stuff. And I will, I've shown a video at the beginning of this as well of what it actually looks like, what them zones look like. So for people who might have skipped straight to the interview, check the timestamps below and there is a video at the beginning showing what some of this looks like. And you talked about mini games as well. So one of the mini games you showed me, I will actually just drop it in here so people can take a look at that.
So people now will have seen that that mini game. What else can they expect? Can they expect multiple mini games within it? Are the mini games play to earn? Or we see what's going on with Axie. I've seen so many people actually making their daily income. They're making their living on games like Axie now. What kind of play to earn features will you guys have? Yeah, I, I mean, exactly what you said. I mean, we're very similar to Cardano. We, we call Cardano a gener generation three blockchain, and we consider ourselves as a generation three game. So we've looked at uh, um, traditional games. We've looked at blockchain games. And we, and we I like to take the best of the best and make it better, which is what we're hopefully doing with, with Cornucopias. Um, it's going to be a mixture of all these games built together. It's definitely going to be play to earn. So w w you will be able to... Um, earn money exactly like uh you can in in axie infinity um plus also the huge community side of it will will be perfect for people that like roblox and minecraft where you'll be able to craft the items you'll then be able to go and um, sell them within the shops and, and we'll have a whole interface um where people can can build these nfts and, and they'll, they'll all be um minted on the on the cardano network as well you know, I would, I would also add to that. Uh, Rob's talking about taking this to the next level and, and the third generation and, and always trying to make things better, which I 100% agree with. And we have a similar value system there in, in what we're trying to instill within our business, our project, but also um, what we create for people out there. And I think one of the things that we have a consciousness about moving into this is the play to earn element we think it's a phenomenal and a powerful tool that we can create this economy within the game we also want to be uh, conscious about what we're doing and what that ends up creating and so we do want to bring in eventually educational and skill set development type of deals where somebody is incentivized to go learn a new skill that will be valuable to them in the real world as well so there's going to be some cool elements that we bring into this as it develops uh, and, and that's pretty exciting. Yeah, I think I think in terms of mini games, each zone will have. We, we will we will constantly iterate the the number of games that are in each mini zone. So at some point there might be twenty up to fifty within each of the different zones. Um, I think one of the bits that we haven't touched on is is the whole um, real world element. So within the city, as as well as having mini games in there, you'll be able to have real. Um, what we, we're calling b-commerce which is blockchain e-commerce within there so companies will be able to have showrooms they'll be able to show off their real life products you'll be able to buy and sell them in there we'll have museums where people can come in and show off their goods they'll be able to show their nft goods as well as well as traditional shops uh, we'll have uh, an entire cinema in there um, we're trying to disrupt quite a lot of technologies and it's a, it's a really ambitious project um, but we We've done quite a lot of experiments at the, at the moment, and we're really confident um, of what we can what we can build with this game. Great. Um, I'll get into the real world stuff in a minute, just on the play to earn side as well. So the items that you created, you were saying you can create furniture and stuff like that in an apartment. When you actually create that within the game, is that created as an NFT then on the Cardano blockchain that can be sold? So if I create it in the game i can then sell it even outside the game or through the game or is that how it works on that side yeah, yeah absolutely yeah you, you'll be able to create them you'll be able to sell them in game in an in, in-game marketplace and also on, on whatever your favorite decentralized marketplace is yeah you, you, the players will own everything within the game okay i really like that side of it because i've I've watched NFTs go from the beginning where in some cases to me, there was a few cash grabs. That's what I seen some of them as with the NFTs that were just rushed out the door and it was like 10,000 or 20,000 of these and the artwork took 10 minutes to design. Yeah. They got something and multiplied it by 10,000. But this is what I've been waiting for is to see this stage. What is the next evolution? And this is the evolution of it to me. Um, yeah. That's what I see. You, you know, if... if Speaking of the evolution, if if you look at gaming, like I don't know, twenty years ago or or however long ago, it was just you're you're just playing with yourself, maybe playing against another player in the same room as you. But then the internet comes along, and now you can play games with people all over the world, right? And then blockchain comes along, and now you can create 
and in and blockchain and NFTs, you can create an entire economy inside the game where the players can own their own assets. And I mean, it's mind blowing wh where that's going to go from there. Um, it's, a, it's an entire new universe with an economy inside of it. And because of the blockchain, you can share the wealth amongst all the players. So this yeah. becomes incredibly powerful and life changing for some. And so it, it's very exciting where this is going to go. I, you know, I, I eventually see a couple, maybe maybe 20, maybe hundreds of, of games that are that huge worlds that are interoperable and entire economies within them. Uh, they're, they're bridged together and they're growing on their own because we're allowing, and one of the elements of this game that we're going to bring in is allowing people to build, and I think Rob mentioned it already in that outer zone of the graph that he showed, you know, we're, we're going to create incentives for people to be able to build on their own, to add value and add more content to the game on its own. So with this, much like Cardano, kind of gradually going decentralized, we're doing the yeah. same thing. We're going to get this thing kickstarted and gradually decentralize and turn ownership and governance and all of those things and, and the ability to build over to the community, which is pretty powerful. Yeah, it definitely is. Like, look, there's a full generation of people that have grown up now playing games. They're buying all these crazy things within games for getting parents' credit cards to buy this new sword or buy this new item that they can only use in that one specific game. And then as soon as they outgrow or get bored of that game, then all the money that was spent on the items is gone. So when they see, they're already starting to see that, when they start getting involved in games where when they buy something, it's not lost. It's not dead money, essentially, when they get sick of the game. They can sell it on. Potentially, items that they buy early on are going to be worth a lot more. As you mentioned earlier, Rob, about some of these land games that where they started out, buying a piece of land in them was, they were nearly giving it away for free in the beginning. And now some of the prices are just crazy high. So there's a whole economy there that can be developed within these types of games. Yeah, and absolutely. Then, I think with some of those games, uh, most of them are, are built on Ethereum. They use a mixture of technologies. Because we're using the Unreal Engine and we've got quite a lot of converters um, that we're able to build with, with our .NET um, engine as well. So we'll be able to import quite a lot of the assets that people already have, whether it's built on Cardano or Ethereum or any other blockchain, we'll be able to import them. And also any 3D um, assets that's built maybe in the unity engine or the unreal engine or especially with the vox engine we're, we're, we're um, quite a far way down from importing those into our game as well so, so we're, we're, we're going after quite a few communities here not just blockchain but also um, game development and and also uh, quite a few other elements as well yeah that could be a huge aspect in building your community because you're not basically saying that this is Cardano and that's that's it. Like you're opening it up to anyone can get involved in it. And again, interoperability cross chain over the future to me is the way forward. Like it's, we're all big fans of Cardano here, but for me personally, crypto isn't a zero sum game. It's not going to be one chain wins and everyone else loses. So having that type of cross chain interoperability is, will be a massive feature I feel for the popularity of the game because a lot of the ones on ethereum so far that i see are just in that game they're not looking outside of it has advantages disadvantages but yeah. i think the advantages will outweigh the disadvantages yeah i, I want to say something here that we may have to cut from the video but i don't think we'll have to uh, okay but uh, the we, we have something pretty exciting that's happening with a potential advisor. The only reason I say this is because the deal isn't signed yet. Uh, but uh, by the time this video airs, it should be signed. And so I'm going to go ahead and mention it. If not, we can cut it. But uh, the, the CEO, former CEO of Atari, he's now heading up the blockchain element. His name's Fred Chesnez. He's going to be an advisor for the project. And one of the things that we're talking about with him is the ability to use the ERC-20 converter that Card Cardano has created to bridge some of the Ethereum world games that he's involved in with ours. So we're already talking about interoperability and actually how to technically make that happen. And 
Uh, it is incredibly feasible and we are we're heading in that direction already. So while we are incredibly uh, loyal and passionate about Cardano, I also agree with you. It, it, we're, we're blockchain agnostic. We do intend to be interoperable with other chains. Uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. I'm very much an advocate for the crypto industry and blockchain and what it can do. And so we're for all projects. Uh, we're just starting off on Cardano. Yeah, um, that's really big on the partner. We'll get into that in a second. But I would say, look, from the sounds of it, you are Cardano first. The NFTs that you create within the game are all on Cardano. So this is a Cardano first game, but yep. it's opening up and letting the rest of the blockchains come in and take advantage of that as well. Yeah, so, and we'll remain operating from Cardano. There's a lot of uh, the, the benefits of the Babel fees that Rob could tell you about uh, for us. But um yeah I, I think that's we'll, we'll save that for later yeah i mean for me like i said I've, I've been one year today i've been part of cardano and josh obviously owns a state pool we're we're, we're 100 percent behind um cardano and i don't think at the moment you could there is a better platform to build a game like this on if, if you look at um what's coming with hydra we're going to have a million transactions per second if we look at saving the game which i'll be doing saving you know a hundred of saves per per you know possibly per hour you couldn't do that on ethereum at 40 dollars. you can only do that currently on cardano once the bubble fees comes in and there's no cost um the scalability is absolutely unbelievable I mean, we'll be able to get up to a billion players playing the game all at the same time when it's fully decentralized um, and with the community and everything that else that's building I, I i don't think there is any other blockchain that 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 is is so well suited um to to grow just uh with us just just like the game will do well said yeah, that's i really like that i talk to lots of different projects these days and when you ask them why cardano over others they're kind of like well, there's cheap fees and that's it, but they're not. That's what a lot of people take as the selling point. And it's like, yeah, your project is just looking to get on the hype of Cardano. They're not actually looking into what are the advantages of Cardano for your project. So when you're talking about Babel fees, which I think will be a massive feature when it is enabled for anyone who isn't familiar, basically you can pay. So instead of like on Ethereum, when you're sending any ERC20 token, you have to use Ethereum as gas fee. Currently on Cardano, you still do need to use ADA, but with Babel fees, you will be able to, on the front end for the, I suppose the customer or client, they can use the native asset that they are trading in uh, to pay the fee. And on the back end, it's there's a whole process with the stake pools that handle how the transaction works. But to the end user, they don't have to have extra assets. So again, we won't get deeper into that. We'll stick on cornucopias, but I really yep. do like that you're you're actually looking at the real reasons to use Cardano rather than just um, jumping into it because it's the hot yeah, topic I, right I, now. I, yeah, yeah, we're the long-term Cardano guys. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have I've researched every single blockchain for for looking for which is is the best. I, I wouldn't say I, I was um, you know slightly. Um, bias towards Cardano, I'm not. In, in building a traditional game, you would build this out on the, on your cloud server. Um, and the beauty of building on the blockchain is, if we ever if if we ever cease to to stop building this game, um, the game will will live on because the blockchain will live on. The players will still be able to build everything on the smart contracts. Everything will be downloaded on the PC. Um, this this game can live and grow forever. Great. So one part we actually skipped was, and you bringing in the advisor role, the team. So I presume something this size isn't just you two guys. Um, what's Who's behind the scenes or what's going on there as well? It's not that much bigger. Go on, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got, we've got four founders. Um, okay. We're UK and US based. The uh, actual entity will be from the UK. We've got a team of developers. I think we're at about nine now um, on, on the team. We're bringing another one, another one on tomorrow to help with research and development. But overall, we've got an incredibly strong team. Our lead developer is, uh, 
he's remarkable. I mean, he put together those mini games that we showed earlier in a very short amount of time. Uh, and, and uh, you know, those are only one level, so the, the mini games are going to need to have multiple levels, which is why we're raising funds to add. Uh, we're in the middle of that, that process of, of putting projects up on Catalyst, et cetera, raising funds however we can, because this is, uh, there's a large scale, and like Rob said earlier, it's an ambitious project. But what, without a doubt, with what we've shown you, that's happened in a short amount of time, and we have the technical expertise to uh, pull this off. Now we have the leadership and the strong core foundation within our team. Now we need to scale and bring on new people to help really take this and, and bring it to market because our intent with this is to have a real working game. This is no rug pull. This is no, you know, we're trying to make quick yeah. money and leave. We're, we're yeah. trying to build an amazing game that's long lasting and we're we're leading with that. I, I mean, we've already been building the game, so we'll continue with that. Um, yeah, I, I think this is the whole ethos of the Catalyst project as well. I mean, the four founders, we don't take any salary, so so we're absolutely bootstrapping this this project ourselves. Uh, we built this on on no money. the The idea of Catalyst is to be a springboard to hopefully take indie developers and, and individual people and, and hopefully give you the chance to, to, to go to the next level, possibly um, build a company. I, so, you know, we follow that whole journey through and, and, and this is our first major, major offering. All right. So is this fully Catalyst funded so far? Or no, fun, how no funding. No, no, we've just no funded funding ours. Just yeah. Just the four founders. We're, we're, we're currently just paying the wages of, of, uh, of our, our our employees yeah. i i really like that that you're not just come out first give us 10 million then we'll build a nice game out of that and no, hope or hopefully we'll build a nice game because when you actually no. come to your public fundraise i presume something at this scale no you do, catalyst will get you so far no and we've already uh it, we're, we're self-funding so we've got skin in the game at the moment yeah obviously with what we've got to do we've got to we've got to raise some funds but i will say this rob's also successfully uh built a catalyst project that he'll be showing you some of of what uh he's we're, we're actually utilizing that uh as as an element to add value in the game which is pretty remarkable but that is actually going to be open for everybody to use um and that's the visual studio project that he's created um so I didn't know if you wanted to go into some of what Rob's done on the NFT side of things. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you want to, we'd love to show you because what we've created in terms of, I'll just speak to this with what Rob's created. Um, it's remarkable. Like it's, it's uh, in terms of the NFT technology that's already out there, Rob has bridged multiple difference. He's, he's created bridges to IPS, IPFS to have decentralized image storage. Uh, we've got a WooCommerce store that accepts ADA and then creates the uh, NFTs. And that's thanks to one of the people in our community. Rob, what's that? Uh, what's his name that yeah, created uh, that plugin? Yeah, Adam Dean. Adam Dean. That's uh, oh, special yeah. thanks to Adam Dean for creating that. So we're utilizing something somebody else in the community built, uh, which is a WooCommerce plugin. Uh, I, I mean, really, I should let Rob talk about this. He's the, he's the master of what he's created um, in terms of the, the NFT platform. Yeah, the, the, the project that I, I delivered on um, Catalyst, uh, we, there's, a, there's a bit of a screen. I'm, yeah, I'm sharing, I'm sharing my screen. your uh, screen now. So, so that project was all to do with um, interfacing .NET with, um, with Cardano. So as Charles explain, explains it, that this is the ocean. Um, so that open source project, I, I worked with quite a few members within um, the Cardano community. It, it relies heavily on the Blockfrost API, which again is another project that came through through the Catalyst um, system. So what we're looking at here on the left, um, this, this kind of greeny um, gray is actually hooked up real time to our uh, WooCommerce um shopping basket so add orders come in as orders come in that they, they are um gathered with within this software which is which is was based on the open source software that, that i delivered for cardano and then on the right what we also see in, in this yellowy area here is the actual blockchain so when people 
place their orders with our WooCommerce system. It's completely anonymous. These two systems do not know anything about each other, but with the, with the power of this application, which is an enterprise application, which can be further developed to work with Salesforce or, or whatever your backend is, um, I can connect these two together. Um, I can take the order. I can see that the order has been paid on the Cardano network. I can then mint the transactions, send them off and verify them all in one go. Um, and, and yeah, the source code for not connecting these together because this is what I've built on top of my application, but the source code to do all of this bit um, minus 300 extra hours to, to get the software in this kind of state is available uh, for everybody to download for free. So, Okay. Um, you're finished with the screen there, are you? I'll pull. Yep. That's great. Something that the TUI said a good few times there is the open source side of it. And that's that's massive because even within your game, I presume when you're encouraging other people to come in and build in it, having something that's partly open source, I suppose, out there that allows them to build on top of it is only going to be good and it can only drive it further as well because sometimes you can have people come in and they'll pick up where you might have left off and they can take it in a completely different direction. Something that you might not have thought was possible or some other developer or you take someone else's code and take it in a different direction as well. So giving them resources to the community is is huge. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to seeing what the community build. Yeah, and just on that, if anyone's seeing what you built there for the first time, where can they actually find that code if if they want to get into it and use that for some of their projects? Yeah, so in the ideal idea scale um in project catalyst um you'll be able to um, find my project within there okay. um, and also there's a list of funded projects that's shared on on the cardano network so if you just look in fund three for the visual um studio uh, plugin you, you'll be able to find it great um and just before we move on to i want to talk a little bit more about nfts and gaming in general but the catalyst proposal that you guys have coming up that's in fund six is it do you want to talk on that at all? Or I can just leave the links down below as well for people who want to vote on your project? Yeah, we, we haven't um, fully identified which parts we're, we're going to put up for, um, on, on that project yet. We, we might do possibly three or four. Um, like okay. you said before, we, we are self-funded, but we're not looking at stripping the funds out of that community whatsoever. So, so, so the, 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 there'll be smaller projects just to get us to, to that next level. But there will yeah. also be open source projects, obviously, that, that the community, just like this one, will then be able to go and use and, and then build themselves. Yeah, not all of them, but some of them will definitely be, be open source. Some of them will be directly tied to the game. Just depends. But yeah, we'll definitely get you yeah. some links for that. Yeah, yeah I, I can I, put them put them all below. And even if you guys have somewhere on your site that kind of has them all or links them all together, I can put all that information down below as well. And I can talk about them in future videos as well when the proposals are actually up there or when voting is open as well. Yeah, yeah. So outside of Catalyst, then are you guys going to have a token? Will there be a token within the game as well as NFTs or has that is that part of the economy there? Yeah, absolutely. We'll have an India an in-game token. Uh, most likely with an infinite supply that's just utilized to incentivize and create economy within the system. And that will be likely traded for another token that's the main token when you're looking to exit and make, you know, sell or, or make different moves within the system. The, okay. I, I will say this, that we're working with a tokenomics consultant. We need to make sure that we're doing everything legally compliant in how we raise funds. Uh, it's incredibly important to us. And so one of the things that we need to do with some of the first funds that we raise is to ensure that everything is compliant and uh, on the up and up. And that our also our intent with the tokenomics and with the launch is to have a fair token launch. So uh, yeah, we're just, we're navigating through all of that. So anything that I previously said is not um, ent entirely, you know, we're, we're not rigid there in, in terms of what that is, but that's our, our current uh, development in terms of the tokenomics. Uh, we do have a great, consultant in that regard um the next element is adding legal and and making sure that we're we're doing it fully correct perfect so will there be nfts as well coming up 
I suppose before the game comes. Actually, when when can we play the game? When when will it be out? And then we'll get into NFTs. Um, yes, NFTs will be available to buy um, within the next week or a week or two. Um, we're just finalising those graphics. In terms of the game, the game is going to be released uh, sometime next year. That's that's all I can say. It, it really depends on if on how well our NFT sales go and, and if we can raise money with, of what the game looks like. Um, if we can, if we can get somewhere uh, 10 or 15 developers, then we can put them um, all on different parts of the game and then we can bring it all back, back together. So so we have a really nice um, development path depending on whether we end up with four um, Unreal developers or whether we end up with, with 400 of them. The, the game can, can evolve with us. Uh, so it will be next year. Um, probably start off with a mobile game um but then eventually the the pc game will will come out um and it will just evolve over time it, in total there's probably with a, with a full team that we have in in mind there's probably a two to three year build plan for, for all the elements that we want to build in the game um but the path that we're choosing to develop it means we we, we can get the uh, a lot of the the pay to earn stuff out pretty pretty quick and I would add to that that there will be NFT sales coming up soon. So the, there, there is a way to get involved with us and participate before the actual game starts, uh, which is pretty exciting. And that's that's a proven model that's happened with other projects out there. Um, you, you mentioned yeah. Axie Infinity before, and there's Mirandas, there's Decentraland. There's a variety of different projects out there on different chains, uh, all phenomenal you know, thought leaders out there. And, and it's great to see what they're doing. Um, we're, we're looking to improve upon and uh, build upon that. Um, and so you will be able to participate with us here shortly. Um, yeah. Nice. I presume that type of stuff, you guys have social profiles that I can put below anyway that people can follow for, or what's the best place to keep up to date? Yeah, absolutely. And we'll also share our, our website with you in the white paper uh, as well. Uh, cause that's pretty extensive and it goes into some technical elements and, and exactly what needs to happen, uh, for us to pull this off and execute. And we, we can make it happen at a boot, bootstrapped and, and low resource level, uh, like we're currently doing. It'll just take time, uh, take longer and, and we'll have to launch with less, uh, but we can also make it happen at, at scale and, and really speed things up and expedite. So it just kind of depends on how this, the, the, the next couple of months goes for us. Great. Uh, yeah, I'll put all the details below. I missed out on lots of other gaming platforms and virtual land games and stuff like that. So I have, a that I'll be, I have a feeling that yeah, I'll be trying to uh, get involved in some of this anyway. But uh, we'll, I'll talk about that in some of my other videos when, when I'm doing it myself. Yeah. So let's have a look at the NFTs that you guys sell. So in the upcoming weeks, they will then be characters in the game or are they going to be items within the game? Like you mentioned, you can build items. What will the NFTs be that will be sold? Yeah, the, 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 the characters are NFTs. Um, another thing that we want to do in the future is, is do some co collaborations with, with some of the games um, within the Cardano community. So we will be looking at, uh, um, building other nft character well using utilizing other nfts and then building characters within our games from from whatever the, those nfts are so so we're, we're trying to uh, yeah involve it as much as we can and if if we ever do get to the stage where we're going to release other games which, which whatever characters that you that you have they'll be compatible with, with all other games so you you really will earn your characters and they will follow you wherever you want wherever you go or you can just sell them to somebody else and then they can just pick off pick up where you left off very nice um just your camera is actually just frozen there it's frozen on my end anyway i presume it's the same for josh there yeah he's incredibly good at being perfectly still while talking. <laughs> that's what i was wondering there yeah <laughs> he's an expert skill yeah no i don't know what happened there i think uh, we can still hear you anyway so that's that's one of the main things very strange yeah it's still just, just yeah, yeah. Ju ju just is uh, a cartoon 
<laughs> where my face would be. This is where you need an NFT as your profile picture to uh, to stand in for you. <laughs> but we can continue anyway because at least we can yeah. hear you. Um, we have seen you. You're a real person up to now anyway. So, yeah. um, car- or what was that? So, evolution of NFTs. Do you see gaming? Is that evolution of it or what We're do you see? We're seeing an evolution of a human into an NFT right now. <laughs> Actually, whatever that cartoon is that you create, we're going to put some metadata to it and a and an address and create an NFT out of that. So um, we might we might actually make that for sale to the community. It's it's going to be Rob's new character that somebody could play within the game. Anyway, sorry to answer your question. What what was the question again? There he is. He's live. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, just so I was, I see the. NFTs as the or gaming on top is the evolution of NFTs from what we've seen in the beginning, going from just collectibles into bringing them into a real use case. What's your own thoughts on that? Is there a next evolution on it for NFTs as well, or is gaming kind of the next while? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I imagine Rob's got some thoughts on this as well. So I think we both have something to say, but th- there. There's a lot more to NFTs than than uh, the current story dictates. That's for sure. Um, and I don't think that I could necessarily guess where it's going, but I would. I do believe that NFTs are going to represent real world assets. They're going to represent um, partial shares of real world assets, and that we haven't even begun to see how this is going to change the way uh, financial. Uh, and, and the economy works. I mean, there's so much more to it. So yeah, it got really hot in a variety of ways with art and creative elements. And I think that will continue to a degree. Uh, but when, when you start bridging real world assets into it, that's, that's a whole nother level. And, and so, and, and that is something that we want to consider within our game. So that there will be that element that we're bringing into it um, and how well that works. Uh, you know, we, we, we're not going to know just yet, but like you take an idea and you test it in a variety of ways and maybe in a variety of different industry verticals to see which vertical of a real world asset appeals to the early community, because the, the early community is going to be gamers and crypto enthusiasts. But that's going to change over time as well. And as we get into a more broad community, for example, one of our early stage partners, Jira Wallet, which I know, I'm sorry, I'm stealing from your partner question, but one of our early stage partners is Jira Wallet. And one thing that that's going to enable us to do is to bridge non-crypto users into the game very easily because they've got a fiat on and off ramp within their technology. So that's that's a fascinating use case for bringing in a, a, a non-crypto experience, non-blockchain community which opens up the doors for other real world type assets. Like one example that Rob likes to mention is Ticketmaster, you know, selling tickets to an event or whatever, but we don't really know how that's gonna go. However, we know that the potential is there. And so we get to test it in a variety of different ways and see what actually works. Uh Uh-oh, we lost him. There he is, he's back. No. no. Oh, he froze again. (laughs) Yeah, my biggest worry. Uh, Hey, it's all good. It's gone great until now. So- uh, Technology. It's it's all good. Um, yeah, I do agree on that. And getting real world use case as well. We see some music artists now are experimenting with it and kind of given extra privileges to people who hold a certain NFT. I've seen others on about where you get access to unreleased records as well, as well as backstage passes and stuff like that. So I think there's a whole new use case. And when you are bringing the real world into cornucopias as well, then I'd say there's there's a lot of different areas that probably will be explored that aren't even I suppose obvious yet that could be an yeah. integration. Yeah. So you talked about partners there as well. So Jiro, you mentioned anything else you want to get into on partnerships or where are we going in the next three years for Cornucopius partnerships yeah. and in general. That's going to be one of my main focuses, uh, you know, and, and on the marketing side and business development side. I really want to bridge in partnerships that add value for the end users. Uh, so if you look at DeFi and what's happening with DeFi, right? He's back. There he is. Oh, hey, you were moving. So keep it on. Um, DeFi. If you look at DeFi and what's happening in DeFi, um, we want to create elements within the game where somebody could go around and, and find a... Um, decentralized finance transaction that they could uh, implement, like that they could basically do yield farming within the game. So 
for example, Wi-Fi is another partner. They're going to create the ability for us to go over to their Wi-Fi station or a Wi-Fi house or Wi-Fi building within the game and uh, deposit some of your token. You, you uh, stake some of your token, delegate some of your token, uh, and begin a yield farming process to earn revenue on that coin, earn APR on that coin, much like you can do with a Yearn or with Aave or with some of these other DeFi platforms. You can just do that within the game. So we're bridging DeFi and uh, gaming as well. And that'll be done. There's there's a lot of creative use cases that we have for that. Uh, but the reality is basically we're trying to bridge the, this this new economy within the game in a variety of ways. Um, and that's that's a fairly exciting one. So, uh, yeah, that, that's one element. That's another partner that we, we've added. Yeah. Great. Um, Rob, any thoughts from yourself on where you see it over the next few years or any closing thoughts, I suppose, before we wrap it up here? Yeah, I'm looking forward really to um, Christmas so I can get myself a new setup so I can I can hold a decent <laughs> conversation with people. Um, over the next three years, I just think it's going to the, the potential of the, of the game is absolutely huge. Just as Cardano comes into itself with with smart contracts, with the Babel fees, like I say, with with Hydra, um, we've not even mentioned the the personal id that you you can bring on to um, onto the cardano network so where with other games they might introduce gambling you don't know if, the, if there's a nine or a ten year old gambling but on the cardano network with the unique uh the, the tala prism uh, the, yeah. yes thanks for recovering with a, with a tala prism yes we'll have true identity on there as well so, so i mean yeah i'm just so looking forward to like say what what the community build on our system and just how the game evolves and and personally i'm looking forward to to being part of a, of a of a large team and being able to to to, to see some of these um the ideas that some of the young the young guys that join us are, are going to bring because i think working with teams is 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 probably the is just as it you get just as much as enjoyable watching people progress through their careers and, and mentoring them as, as you do um, watching the project evolve. That's great. Yeah, uh, I suppose the that's another advantage of building on top of Cardano is if you have areas within your island, within your game that you have to be above a certain age. So you could have a Vegas strip within your game where you have to be over yep. 18 to go into it using something like a Tyler Prism to verify your your NFT or your wallet or whatever way you want to do it. There's so many options there as well. So Josh, any closing thoughts for us before we wrap this up? And I will put the, all of the links down below. Closing thoughts. You know, first of all, this is a very exciting space. Uh, we've got some some pretty amazing things that are unfolding because of this technology, we've got an amazing community with Cardano and the platform and smart contracts uh, functionality being launched. It's such a it's it's a cool time and a great time to be involved in this community. What I would say for closing thoughts is, if any of this strikes you as interesting, you want to find a way to participate to it with us. Reach out. Uh, we we're we're welcoming uh, community participation in in the ways that make sense for us. So, you know, please, please reach out to us. We're, we want to build something real here and we invite participation from an amazing community that's out there. And so, um, yeah, that's that's the final thing I'd say. We want to see where this goes and uh, we want to involve the community however we can. It doesn't mean we can involve everybody, obviously, but, you know, what we can do, we will do. Um, so reach out. We're, we're also open to partnerships within the community as well. So please reach out if you're open to be a, being a partner. Uh, in a variety of ways, if you want to be included in the game or added to the game in some way that represents whatever your project is, whatever your project is doing, uh, there's a variety of ways we could do that. So uh, that and then thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And thank you, Paul, for hosting us. Yeah, it's been great to have you guys here um, for myself. I really enjoyed it. It's something that I'm trying to educate myself on a lot more because I see such a big future in gaming on the blockchain in general so i've enjoyed it i hope everyone else has if you have please make sure give it a like share it out there if you think others are interested ideas anything like that leave them down below as well and 
hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will talk to you again soon. All the links we mentioned will all be down below in the description as well. So thanks for watching.